If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. To solve this problem, it's going to be useful to draw a free body diagram showing the forces acting on the spherical water drop. And so, of course, we have the downward gravitational force, which we can write as Fg. And then we have the upward electric force. And we know there must be an upward electric force because the spherical water drop is suspended in the air. So if there's a downward force, then there must be some upward force. And in this case, it is an electric force because we have the presence of an electric field. I suppose we could also draw the electric field projecting downward as indicated in the question. Now part A wants us to calculate the magnitude of the gravitational force, so Fg. We know from physics 101 or so perhaps that Fg is equal to mg. The problem here is we don't have the mass of the spherical water droplet. And so in order to get the mass, it turns out we need to look at the density of the water. So we know density of the water or any object is equal to its mass divided by its volume. Notice if we multiplied both sides of the equation by volume, the volumes would cancel, and then we would have volume multiplied by density is equal to mass. So we're going to make a substitution here. We're going to replace the mass in this equation with volume times density. That's nice because the density of water is a known value. It's 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. But we don't have the volume of the spherical water droplet, so now we have to step back and talk about how to find the volume of this spherical water droplet. Well, the volume of a sphere from geometry is 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So we're going to go ahead and substitute this expression right here for the volume in our Fg equation. So here it is, 4 thirds times pi radius cubed times the density times g. Now everything here is known because the question gave us the diameter. So if we have the diameter, then of course we can get the radius. Just be a little careful here. So radius is equal to diameter divided by two. So we would plug in the 1.1 micrometers for the diameter and then divide that by two. Now that's going to give us a radius of 0.55 micrometers but the reason we have to be careful is because micro is not the standard unit of, of a length. So we want to convert that into meters, and that's quite easy, because if it's in micrometers, all we do is multiply that by 10 to the minus 6th, and that will put it into meters for us. So we are all set to plug all of our known values here to calculate Fg. So we have 4 thirds times pi times this radius. Don't forget to cube the radius, multiply by the density of the water, and then multiplied by g, which of course is 9.8 meters per second squared. So when we work this all out, we can see that Fg is equal to 6.83 times 10 to the minus 15 newtons. And that would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now, for part B, we are asked to determine the, the number of excess electrons. And it turns out that going back to our free body diagram is going to be helpful here. So we can see that the upward electric force would be equal in magnitude to the downward gravitational force. So we can say that Fe is equal to Fg. We've learned in this chapter that the electric force magnitude is equal to the electric field magnitude times the magnitude of charge on the object. So we're going to make another substitution here. We're going to take the electric force and we're going to fill in electric field times charge. One more substitution is needed before we can get the number of excess electrons. We know that little q is the charge on an object. And that charge would equal the number of excess charges multiplied by the value 
of an electric charge. So the value of an electric charge is usually symbolized by lowercase e. Lowercase e has a value of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So again, the total charge that an object contains, this little q, would equal the number of excess charges multiplied by the amount of charge on a single excess charge. So in other words, lowercase n times lowercase e. So that's the substitution that we'll make for q here. And the reason that that's nice is because it introduces n. And n is exactly what we are attempting to solve for. So now we can divide both sides of this equation by capital E, little e. So that will leave us with just n, the number of excess charges on this water droplet. And then at that point, all we do is plug in our known values. We have the gravitational force that we found in part A, which is about 6.83 times 10 to the minus 15 newtons, divided by the electric field magnitude, which was 299 newtons per coulomb, and then times the standard value of the electric charge 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. When you crunch that down on your calculator, you're going to get approximately 143. So that would be how many excess electrons are present on the water droplet.